Hello, everyone. I'm here with Brad Langell, uh, President and CEO of Gold Gold Resources. We're doing the backstage interview for the Metals Investor Forum. Brad, thanks for taking some time today to dig a little deeper on Gold Gold. Oh, thank you, Peter. So, Brad, let's jump right into it. Uh, last year was a big year for your company. Many milestones were hit. Uh, let's let's perhaps look at one of those. To start with, uh, there was an initial resource, mineral resource on Los Ricos North. Maybe you can talk about that a little bit uh, for us and then talk about what's next for that project. Yes, uh, I mean, uh, 2021 was a big year for the company and there was a big resource just issued on uh, December 7th. And that was um, 161 million ounces of silver equivalent in Los Ricos North. Um, but you know, the last, oh, about, uh, two and three quarters years were big years for the company in uh, the Los Ricos district. And that for sure, Peter, is is the real driver of the company. Um, we have in total now up over 240 million ounces of silver equivalent in the district. <clears throat> you know, when you think about a district, and, and Peter, you, you know as much or more about this than I do, and you think about silver, um, it's really a limited supply in the world of, of premium projects, silver projects. And um, we really feel at Gold Gold that the Los Ricos district is probably one of the top three to five in the world uh, from our research in that it's bulk mineable, um, which is a big advantage. Uh, we, we Look, we do have the very, very high grade intercepts, uh, Peter. Like when we release, uh, our intercepts and we'll have you know broad zones of you know up to 70 meters they always include something in many cases in the uh, kilos and the narrower intercepts the advantage this project has is that we can bulk mine that very very high grade because it lives in a sea of moderate to good grade and that's a big advantage for for gold gold and uh, i think on the call um, last week i did mention as well the other big advantage, and you would know from silver projects, a lot of silver projects metallurgically are a concentrate. You know, a lot of times there's like a, what's called a flotation circuit in a mill, and they're associated with base metals. Now, mostly our project is not that. We have one zone called El Arito, note of 240 some million ounces, you know, about 40 million ounces would be that type of material. But everything else is what's called whole ore leaching. So it goes in a mill, but we bring it right down to a door A bar of gold and silver is the uh, plan for us versus selling a concentrate. And a concentrate, there's more discount to the metal if you sell a uh, concentrate, which is only part of the process to get that bar. So that's some of the big advantages of uh, Los Ricos. So that's interesting. Um for investors and, and prospective investors to know is that what you end up producing ultimately there uh, will have a higher value um, for right. the company versus yes. many other uh, producers. So that, that's actually yep. quite interesting. And so what would be next at uh, Los Ricos North uh, for this year? What, what are you looking towards in terms of uh, exploration, ongoing drilling and areas of focus even? Yeah. So um you know, we, we completed 100,000 meters of drilling in Las Ricos North over the last uh, 15 months. And and really, the focus there and what we told our investors and um, retail and institutional, we're very um, highly institutionally held as well by a lot of the large funds. We told them, look, we're going to do 100,000 meters of drilling, and then we're going to tell you where we're at, what that yielded. And we uh, we have to make that point very clear that it's a, that was just a point in time we got to that 161 million ounces so you know a little more than half of it is indicated and half have inferred with the 100,000 meters and that was just a report back to the shareholders saying here's the first 100,000 meters that wasn't we're slowing down we found the easy stuff that was we finished 100,000 meters so in 2022 we're drilling another 100,000 meters in Los Ricos North. And, you know, talking about the focus of that 100,000 meters, and that'll give you an idea of what we think about the potential for growth in ounces. We feel about 80% of that is not going to be focused on infill drilling. It's 
going to be focused on ounce expansion. And that's because we don't think we've um, slowed down in, in our ability to add new resources in the north. So big focus on adding a bunch more ounces in the north and um, a year much like 2021 for growth expansion, ounce expansion in the north is what we see for 2022. That's great. So it'll be interesting to watch the news flow uh, from, from Los Ricos North. Um, let's shift gears a little bit and talk maybe a little bit about um, Los Ricos South. There was a PEA uh, last year. And uh, what um, can investors look uh, forward to for this year? Well, you know, um, again, I'd say 2022 is primarily about showing that this is one of the very top silver districts in a lot of ways, metallurgy, quality of um, grade and mineability as far as bulk mineability. Those are the things that are going to be the big focus in 2022, like 2021. And we think that's going to add a lot of value for our shareholders. Um, that being said, in Las Rico South, we had a deposit there of 83 million ounces, about uh, 60 million of uh, 63 million of that being M&I, well, fairly well drilled, and uh, another 20 million of inferred, which we did do a, a PEA around. So, We've been working away at engineering down there and advancing that to a much higher level economic study, a pre-feasibility study. And in 2022, we'll release the results of that pre-feasibility study. And, um, you know, so far, what I can tell you about it is that we've done a lot more in the metallurgy down there and really it confirmed the uh, metallurgy that was in the PEA. And uh, metallurgy is very important in uh, these deposits. You always want to make sure that um, as you're looking at the uh, development of a, a district like Los Ricos, that the company is paying attention to metallurgy, which we've been doing, in, you know, advanced in the south and first pass in the north, but the first pass in the north looks very good. And the metallurgy in general in the district shows high recoveries of both uh, silver and gold. So that's the focus for 2022. Growth, growth, growth in ounces and value. We're still very much exploring and discovering but in the South, we've advanced engineering and uh, plan on a, on a, a uh, pre-feasibility being published in 2022. Well, it's interesting. Metallurgy certainly is important. And I think that it's, it's an aspect that a lot of people tend to maybe not pay enough attention to because ultimately it determines <laughs> how many ounces you actually get paid for selling um, and recover right. and then eventually get paid for selling. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how, I mean, I know it's early, but at this point, how you envision these projects ultimately being developed in terms of open pit versus underground or combinations of those? Yeah, so the PEA in Los Rico South, that uh, showed two thirds of it being open pit and one third underground. And when I say underground, again, these deposits are very high grade, but surrounded by a sea of moderate to good grade. So underground, you need a bit higher grade of bulk mining. But still, I'd like to make the point that even the underground portion would be, a, we see it more as a bulk mineable uh, underground, you know, long hole mining potentially and uh, much wider widths. So um, lower cost per ton for bulk mining underground. So it's none of this is really narrow vein uh, to per se, per se. So um, yeah, Los Ricos South coming first with, um, and in the PA, it's a, uh, you know, that's a great, producer Los Rico. So that combined with Peral would, you know, we could see cash flows, you know, approaching $100 million US uh, per year. So not a small project by any extent, but the, the big picture is the whole district and 2022 growth of more ounces. That's what's going to unfold every week, every second week, press releases, uh, results, 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 and lots of news flow engineering, but mostly growth of bounces in 2022. Excellent. Um, Peral is your, your cash cow, so to speak, um, important, integral to, to the company. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the natural, I guess, evolution of that project? 
Uh, and I mean, I'm a bit curious, do you see pot potential for, let's say it's life ultimately being, and I know again, it's early because that's years off, but the potential for its life even being extended beyond what we, you know, what we perhaps uh, expect right now. Yeah. You know, with, with, um, <clears throat> Peral, I mean, uh, it's a great project and great project in a community sense, a great project that it's generated, uh, free cash, um, that we've reinvested. Um, but it's certainly not the driver of the company, that's for sure. We've developed some good technology there around retreating tailings and cleaning up the environment and has done a lot for us on the ESG um, stage. Um, but, you know, I look at the Prowl district and I say, well, there's a district that's been long lived, uh, Prowl um, and the surrounding uh, Santa Barbara. And these have gone for over 400 years mining. So, we're looking at things like, you know, we have an operation there now. Is there some other material that we could truck in there? Even, even some oxide, you know, um, um, uh, material that might, you know, come from residual uh, people around there with low grade stockpiles. There's all kinds of opportunity when you already have an operating mine. So we're always looking at ways to optimize and Peral is all about <clears throat> We, we don't concern, like it, it generates pretty steady state, but we don't concern ourselves so much every quarter with how many ounces it produces. We can, we want to concern ourselves with producing cash flow. All of these things are about cash flow and um, ultimately. So we see Peralis, uh, it's, it's not the driver of the company by any means, but it's a nice, nice add on for us. And um, it's very, very good for us in the ESG community environmental cleanup it, it ticks all those boxes which is so important for social license so um, that's what we see from Peral. Excellent um, so we're getting uh, close to uh, I guess our, our time maybe you can give us a, um, a quick overview of the catalysts for for this year what investors can and perhaps should look forward to. Yeah I, I think that it's going to be if there's one overriding catalyst in 2022 it's going to be growth of ounces. We see uh, the potential for lots more ounces in Los Ricos. Um, we see that we're going to get engineering done in Los Ricos South. And just in everybody's mind, you know, that becomes just more and more and more advanced. Um, but it's, it's Los Ricos being identified as one of the most important silver districts in the business and growth of ounces there. And uh, I, I think that's how it will be perceived in 2022. It's obviously when you get a district of this scale and, um, and you know, there's limited supply, and I believe, and Peter, you know better, but uh, I believe in the silver space, there's limited supply of high quality assets. And that of course attracts you know, um, the majors are certainly, they'll be viewing a high quality asset like this. I'm not saying that'll ever happen. That's another, that's outside of our control. We control what we can control. We're finding ounces, we're advancing engineering, but obviously it's becoming prominent as one of the premier silver assets in the silver business. And that'll become more obvious in 2022. Well, that's excellent. I, I think that, uh, it, you know, uh, all of these different sort of aspects of projects, et cetera, that are, that are being advanced and at different levels and, and the outlook uh, should make for an exciting 2022. And uh, I certainly thank you for your time to give us that, uh, that great overview and uh, look forward to doing this again soon. Thanks for that, uh, Brad. 